some of the most successful people that I know, and my personal coach and mentor did not even graduate from high school and makes multi-million dollars and coaches people like me, okay? So I want you to understand that what you told the audience about was only one part of my brain and Western culture and society deifies that. We think that the cognitive, the thinking, the IQ, that is God, <laughs> okay? But guess what? This is why I wrote a book about respect because I met many people who had very high cognitive functioning, but yet they weren't getting everything they wanted in life. And so maybe we want to start out with how I've defined respect so that people can understand that if you're, you know, the, the listeners want to say, well, what is it? And that's the question that I asked. What does it mean when people say they aren't respected? And the first area that made me really think about it a whole, whole, whole lot was being in the, in the physician community. And after I left doing conventional Western medicine, being in a physician community of thousands, and I would say that I'm in this group, it's like 50,000 physicians from around the world. And they all complain and try to, it's just, it's interesting because you will see that doctors are people too, and they have the same issues in their family and their life and make bad decisions and have trouble the same way everybody else does but they have a very high cognitive. And guess what? A lot of times that's their handicap because my book before Get Respect was called Too Smart to Be Struggling. And the reason why I wrote that is because I saw a lot of people who are really smart and they were struggling, but they had trouble asking for help because they felt like they were so smart that they should know everything. And so they were failing in other areas of their life. I mean, and, and so the respect comes from realizing that people were saying, the patients don't respect me, the hospital doesn't respect me, that nobody respects me. And, and, and guess what? This was before we went through the pandemic and COVID, <laughs> okay? I mean, before did. that, now it's even higher. Um, they were complaining about, and I said, well, what are they really saying? What does that really mean? And, it, and just like the title of the book, they didn't feel seen, they didn't feel heard, and they didn't feel appreciated. They felt devalued by people that were around them that they were dealing with and interacting with it. And what I realized from working with my own clients, when they would say this to me, what was really going on in their life? For people on a professional level, because I was dealing with people who are really brilliant and they wanted to move forward and do the right thing and they were frustrated. And in the work situation, they were feeling like a boss wasn't seeing them right or their colleagues weren't respecting them. They weren't getting the promotion they wanted or they were in a high position and they didn't feel like they had um, a good command and command and control is not the way you get this. They didn't feel like they had a good feel to be able to move people to the action that they wanted to be successful in their career and make their companies as successful as they wanted to be. That was on the work side. But on the relationship side, and I'm talking romance plus friends, family, okay, the same words were propping up and popping up. And I realized that these people, who are all people, are dealing with the same thing, one on the professional level and one on the personal level. They felt like they weren't seen, heard, or appreciated. And that's what people mean when I'm not getting respect. I'm not getting respect because you don't feel like your point of view is taken. Um, and if you, if you want to move over, and, and I know a lot of human resource people listen to it, and they love, love like, um, you know, data and studies and all this other type of stuff. And in corporate, that's, you know, people live and die by McKinsey. And guess what? <laughs> <laughs> McKinsey is biased and wrong too, and they leave out stuff and they don't know how to deal with certain stuff, but that's where boutique firms like mine come in to fill in those gaps because we're not trying to turn a Titanic here. We want to get you results. Okay. And so respect is one of those things where this is something that is talking really about your energy. How are you landing with people? How are people landing with you? When, so, when you respect someone, 
what is it about them that makes you respect them? What is it about me besides having an Ivy League degree that makes people respect me even when they don't know that I have an Ivy League degree or who I am? What is it about me that when I walk into the room, you know there's something about because I know she knows, <laughs> okay? What is that? And everybody wants that. And that's when I came up with the respect method and figured out, because I reversed engineered, think about it, I'm a doctor, but I'll tell you some other stuff. I reverse engineered, here's how you make it so that you make people respect you. And when I say make them, it is not about force at all. It's yeah. not about force. It's about learning how to be who you are well enough so everybody is perceiving that. 